In this video, I'm gonna build an app in less than 48 hours to show you how easy it really is. For the past 10 years, building an app has required millions of dollars from VCs, multiple programmers, and months to complete it. But here's the secret. AI is changing everything. I used it to build RizGPT, Umax, and Cali, which have all made tens of millions of dollars. Now I'm building Faith, the first ever free Christian prayer and AI Bible chat app. I love and respect people of all religions, but I grew up Christian and I think that it's great for the world. Now I started using these AI Christian prayer apps, but the issue that I found is that a lot of these apps charge five to $10 a week. That's over $200 per year for people that are just trying to get connected with their spirituality. And the reality is that most of these costs are not due to AI. Inference is actually pretty cheap. They're being used for marketing and profits for the app developers. And listen, I have no issue with people making money off of apps. I do it myself and I teach other people how to do it. But at the same time, I think that building one of these products for free would be massive for the Christian community and help more and more people get connected with their faith, spirituality, and relationship with God. Now you might be wondering how I'm gonna cover the cost of this app. Based on my calculations, it'll be about $20,000 per month per million users. Now, that said, I'm gonna cover it to start, but if it begins to scale out of control, I'll likely accept donations from the Christian community to help provide and pay for the AI costs as well as database and authentication. I will never take a dollar of profit from this app, nor will I ever have subscriptions that are required in order to use it. This is honestly a project of goodwill. I wanna give back to the Christian community and build something that everybody can rally behind. You guys might think that there's some way I'm gonna try and make money off of all of this, but being completely honest, there's not. I'm doing this in service of the Lord. What time is it right now, Blake? It's 7 a.m. We're getting started. Right now, I need to determine everything that I need to do in order to build a viral app. Each app has its different requirements, different pain points. So right now, I've got to determine what the next 48 hours looks like for me. There are four key parts to building an app. Ideation, design, development, and distribution. In this video, we're not going to go over distribution. We'll save that for a later part because we can't reasonably do that in 48 hours. That said, we have a free 12 hour course. So if you want to learn more about all of this, check the link in our bio. We already have the idea figured out and we've sketched out a little bit of the initial design. The majority of this video will be showing the process of development. And to be honest, a lot of that will be me sitting right here and coding. Coding is so fucking easy now, bro, it's insane. Design always starts in Figma. This is where you lay out what you're actually trying to build. And if you want to take it a step further, you can hire a designer off of Upwork for 20 to 25 bucks an hour to make it look really nice. What app is this, Blake? Figma? Yeah, this is Figma. This is where all the design work gets done. Is this like industry standard? Yeah, for sure. Dude, anyone who says that they don't design Figma is crazy. Once you've got the designs done, it's time to download Xcode and Cursor. And this is where the actual coding and development begins. First thing we always do, just gotta open up Cursor. Light work. There are a lot of people that recommend AI no-code tools like Lovable or Bubble or Rourke or V0. But to be honest, I advise against it. The issue with most of these tools is that you don't actually interface with the code at all. All you're doing is explaining to build it in plain English. And this is great, but there are times where the AI is gonna mess up and it's gonna go in circles and you won't be able to get it out of that loop. What's great about Cursor is that it's very easy to learn and actually interface with the code itself. It's a low code, not a no code tool. I haven't seen many high quality apps come out of these no code tools. So at this point in time, I would advise against it. I do anticipate that this could change in the future, but if you're new to building apps, I would highly recommend using Cursor. Explain what you're trying to build and have it teach you about the actual code that it's writing so you can learn the fundamental computer logic, data structures, and, and systems that are at work as opposed to, once again, getting caught in one of these loops where you explain and ask it to do something and then it tries and fails and then you're stuck in this negative cycle that you can't get out of. 
The process of development usually has two main stages. There's onboarding and authentication. This is where you capture the user information, you have them sign up with their email, and it's very important for security and other reasons. And then there's the actual main functionality. Now, obviously this app is free and I'm doing it very quickly, so for the sake of this challenge, I'm just getting email and authenticating. But if you're building an app yourself, it's very valuable to think about things like the sort of information that you want to capture from the user, and then how to structure your paywall. If you're building a paid app during onboarding, a very important component is the paywall. I would highly recommend using Superwall to handle your subscriptions and paywall testing. After onboarding and authentication, and the primary meat of the app is the actual product itself. In this video, we're building faith with a few main features in mind. The first of which is your daily scripture, devotional, reflection, and prayer. So each day when the user opens the app, they have new scripture and lessons. Next, we have the entire Bible in the app, which is pretty self-explanatory. And finally, we have the AI Bible chat feature, where you can upload scripture or ask basic questions to your Christian spirituality advisor. It's easy for me to talk about these features, but how did this actually come to life? The first day I started off moving super strong. I got authentication done quickly and I was feeling, I was feeling myself. Then it came to building out the daily lessons and it started to move pretty well at first. I added the Bible and I also had started to add the chat functionality. We got the f***ing Bible hard coded in, what's up? But then I ran into some major issues. Firebase billing got all fucked up with my permissions. So annoying, so now I'm switching to Superbase, but this is gonna be a very, very painful process. Initially, I used Google Cloud as my primary backend provider. It was handling AI API calls, database, authentication, the whole nine yards. But if you've ever worked with Google Cloud, you know the policy management is a fucking For the first six or seven hours of the challenge, I was making incredible progress. But at this point, it all came to a halt. For three hours in a row, I got nothing done. And if you've ever built software before, you know there are times where you have to make really hard decisions. So I decided to cut my losses and rebuild the entire thing from scratch. I only had three hours left in the day at this point before a double date with Connor, which actually went super well. But I was behind schedule, so I started to scramble with just a couple hours left in the day to replace my entire backend from scratch, this time with Supabase. While I was at the date, all I could think about was this challenge. And honestly, I had a few drinks and I woke up not feeling good the next morning. I was honestly just about to quit the challenge. I woke up and then I saw that Jude, our videographer, was gone. Not thinking that we're doing a 48 hour challenge? Yeah, should it should have been you, to say no. Like, if people have voiced their concerns, everybody has about you being CMO, about you being creative director, whatever the title is, and then you're gonna take our only videographer in the morning when I'm supposed to be getting up for day two. We have 36 fucking hours to film this challenge. 36 cumulative hours and we're leaving tomorrow morning. At this point, I'm fuming. I'm hungover. Jude's not here to record in the morning and I had just ripped out my entire back end. I needed a reset. So I ran over to the gym, hopped in the sauna and cold plunge and meditated for a little bit. I got back and honestly, I was still pretty mad. But here's the thing about me. I love a challenge. When my back's against the wall and everything is working against me, I get fired up. And that was exactly how I felt that morning. I was a man on a mission. I sat down in this chair that morning and I did not take my eyes off of my laptop for over six hours. After that, I was almost complete with the entire app. If I didn't work like I did during those six hours, I would not have completed this challenge, but I got it done. After that, I was almost finished, so I hopped on a bike for my Ironman training and then got right back to work. To be honest, it's pretty crazy training for an Ironman while also working over 60 hours a week building a new business. But I'm a firm believer that if you want to do anything beyond average, you have to make sacrifices. And I firmly believe that if you have any ambition at all, you should be working for at least 10 hours and working out for at least one hour every single day. And if you can't and you wanna learn how, just watch more of my content.
and you'll become inspired. <laughs> Is it on? To be honest, I've been through very lazy periods of my life. Like this spring to summer, I didn't actually work that hard. But what I love about building apps and specifically designing and developing them is that there are no excuses. If you want to get work done, you should block everything else out, turn off every single notification, ignore every single email, and do nothing but code. Nowadays, I think the vast majority of people don't really do any deep work. I experience it myself at times, but challenges like these honestly push you into new levels and new depths that you were unaware existed within you. So even if you don't know how to code, setting a goal like this, saying that you are going to spend 48 hours doing nothing but sleeping and coding is extremely helpful. Even if you don't complete the task, you'll still learn so much. After the bike ride, I got home and made some finishing touches. And I had a pretty cool meeting. TP USA, the company that Charlie Kirk had founded and was the CEO of, reached out to me, saw that I was building the free Christian prayer app and they wanted to get involved. So I took a meeting with them, I showed them the product and they loved it. It never ceases to amaze me how when you're working on products that really help people and are for the benefit of the world, people will rally behind you and show unbelievable support. Since then, I've had multiple developers multiple marketing agencies and designers all reach out asking if they could do free work to help push this product further. So if you want to support, join the Faith Discord that we'll link below and make sure to follow and subscribe to stay up to date on new announcements and the second part of this series, which will be scaling this app and showing the behind the scenes of what goes in to producing a viral campaign. I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope this inspires you to lock in and build your own app. Make sure to come back for part two.